let's start by setting up our project first so I have created an uh, empty unity project and named it color sort it just has the default sample scene and uh, I just changed the camera color so it looks white uh, just added all the colors so first thing we are going to do is uh, remove our sample scene and uh, let's create a new scene and we won't save it and we'll save our current scene and we are going to save it inside our scenes folder as gameplay and let's delete our sample scene so this is going to be our main scene and uh, we'll change our build settings to android <coughs> and after changing our build settings to android let's uh, go to project settings uh, the build settings will take a bit of time and let's wait so as soon as the project is changed to android it will like uh, install uh, test tools and toolchain management both of the packages we don't need so it is not going to install them so let's uh, go inside project settings and we'll import the text mesh pro and disable the warnings and uh, naming mm, yeah let's also add the naming method so it is compiling my pc is a little bit slow so why is this happening is it a 2d no it isn't a 2d project and it should be done 27 seconds, 100% CPU, anti malware service executable. <coughs> so, why is Microsoft Defender antivirus service uh, taking so much of my RAM? Mm, we'll need to do something. .NET host, okay. It should be. I'll see what is taking most of my RAM afterwards. So let's uh, go to project settings and uh, we'll first import Text Mesh Pro and the toolchain management is not there. And we are going to remove the visual scripting so it won't show up. And inside our settings, we'll disable the warnings. And inside our editor for the naming convention, we are going to use underscore. I use underscore. So here we are going to have underscore and they're not going to be any tags layers and all uh, let's go inside our package manager and we'll first remove the packages so we don't need the jetbrains editor <coughs> and after that we are not going to need the test framework mm, version control also not needed and we can also run the visual scripting and vs code editor so let's also run that and we'll remove the vs code editor let's upgrade our visual studio editor and after that we are going to use dot bean for animation so after it is updated we are going to add package and add package uh, okay so i'll need to go inside my my assets i should have saved my dot bean there and if you have not saved it go to the unity uh, unity asset store and uh, you can like get the dot win from there so there is this dot win let's use import and we are going to import all and it is going to import dot win for us and uh, we'll set our dot win so yeah it is importing reloading script assemblies uh, open dot wheel panel uh, setup dot tween and 
script compilation okay so it is taking a little bit of time and you should have a dot win utility panel opened up and for me uh, we are just going to use uh, the sprites and the UI so that's the only setting that I have changed and uh, that is going to be for the packages and all the settings now let's add our currency into the build and we'll close our build settings and we'll need to import all of our assets so the first asset is going to be our font so I'm just going to directly bring it inside inside my resources folder so this is our font you won't be able to see how it looks but uh, we should be able to use it uh, after bringing our fonts we are going to create the rest of the folders which are for the scripts and the prefabs so there is going to be one more folder inside our fonts which is going to be the levels and uh, let's go inside our assets and we are going to create our prefabs and the scripts folder and uh, let's create our scripts so what script are we going to need so we will need the game manager and uh, for our scriptable object we are going to need level i mean we can even uh, yeah let's just uh, create a scriptable object so we can edit and store it later i created a scriptable object but uh, now i'm thinking like uh, just uh, adding few variables inside the game manager would be better but as i created a scriptable object before so i'll use it as a scriptable object and the cell which is going to be attached to each of the individual cells and after doing that we are going to edit our level so what data are we going to store inside our level so let's go inside visual studio and it's going to be a quick script and the first thing we are going to do is uh, change our level to inherit from scriptable object and we'll use create asset menu and file name is going to be level and our comma menu name is going to be color sort slash level so it is going to create the scriptable object now what we are we going to include so first we are going to have a color for our background color then we are going to have a public color for our top left color then public color top right color bottom right color and bottom left color so it should be directly added with autocorrect and then we are going to have public end for row and public end for call and finally public list of vector two ends uh, which are going to be for our locked cells so it is going to store the position where our cells are going to be locked and that's it now let's go inside unity and we are going to create our default level inside our levels and let's create default level and we'll just call it default level and inside our default level we are going to have eight rows and eight calls the background color is going to be white the top left color is going to be purple the top right is uh, this pinkish or whatever color it may be and the bottom right is going to be yellow and inside our lock let's start with zero zero and then we are going to have one zero and zero one so these are going to be the starting corners and then we are going to have towards the right which should be seven zero and seven and y will be one so okay so we need the row and the column seventh row and uh, this one is uh, okay we'll need to re-edit it re-edit it so let's delete so this is the zeroth row zeroth column first row 
so this will be the upward and after that we are going to need the zero throw and uh, seventh column and then we are going to have zero throw sixth column and uh, first row seventh column and then we'll have top right which uh, top left which should be the seventh row and zeroth column then we are going to seventh row first column and we'll have sixth row zeroth column then we'll have seventh row seventh column seventh row sixth column and then sixth row seventh column so these are going to be the locked cells and they are just uh, the positions for the cells which are going to be uh, locked uh, they won't be swapped or shifted so that was it for this part in a, and in the next part we'll start setting up our level so we have set up our project now we are just going to add the basic ui which are just a couple of text and we'll create the base prefab which is going to be cell it is also pretty straightforward so let's start doing that and uh, the first thing we are going to do is uh, let's add our game manager and our game manager is going to have the game manager script attached and after that let's add our grid parent so this is just going to be the where the zero cell is going to be attached and for now our grid it is at negative 3.5 negative 3.5 and after that we'll add a text and this is going to be our uh, level and the text is going to be level and we'll make it bold and the font we are going to use is uh, alata and let's make it 96 to the center and uh, let's see where we need to align it so the size is going to be 512 by 160 the position is going to be okay so it is going to be 256 by 256 and the position is going to be relative to the top left and it is going to be 192 negative 224 and color we'll need to add our dark black color again i don't know where our text is so yeah it is uh, somewhere negative 224 and <clears throat> for our canvas instead of overlay let's set to camera and the ordering layer let's set it to 100 and we'll have it scale with screen size 1080 by 2160 and we'll have it match the height so as you can see the level is uh, there and after that the size is going to be 64 okay so the size is going to be 64 and instead of free aspect let's use a portrait or simulator and let's use iPhone 13 Pro okay so now it is looking better so the text is going to be 64 and it is going to be centered and let's use 80 and after that we are going to duplicate our level mm, let's not duplicate it mm, let's create a ui and text mesh pro and it is going to have the text of five uh, the color is going to be black alignment is going to be center uh, text is going to be bold size is going to be 112 and uh, the overall size is going to 56 by 160 and it's going to be positioned at negative 48 mm -mm. okay okay alignment bold center top bold center and this is going to be at top top 
okay so now it is looking better so this is let's go to the game view and uh, we'll use landscape landscape click landscape so this is going to be our level and uh, after we duplicate our level we are going to have for the moves and uh, we'll rename it to moves and it is going to be aligned from the center at zero and why does it have there is something wrong five okay so there are only two texts but our five is uh, the font so we need to use alata moves also alata also our text needs to be of the same font instead of liberation liberation and our move is going to be moves it is uh, 80 80 mm, let's make it 64 and uh, also we are going to make the 64 okay so now it reset it and it is looking good and uh, let's go inside the simulator and yeah so that was how it was supposed to look and now it is looking better so for the level file let's set the most to 87 and we are going to duplicate our level and uh, this one is going to be for our best and the text is going to call best and instead of right we are just going to use the anchor to be the right so previously it was left now it is uh, top right and everything else is going to be similar and the best moves uh, let's uh, have it at um, 64 now these are our uh, visual representations for all of our uh, points which is the level the moves and the best score and after that we are going to have two buttons the first button is going to be our uh, play button and our play button is going to be position from the bottom at 0192 size is going to be 512 by 160 and for the image we are going to use the 9 sliced so you should be able to find it and that's how our image is going to look and we are going to have a text attached to it so let's add a UI text uh, it is going to call play let's align it to the center let's make it uh, full screen let's make it 64 bold and we'll attach our font and let's increase the character gap a little bit so let's have it at 16 and we'll increase the size to 80 so this is going to be our play button and we'll duplicate it again and this is going to be our next button and it's just going to call the text as next so we have both of our buttons and every asset now let's create our cell so our cell is just going to be a sprite so let's attach our sprite renderer first and the sprite we are going to use is a square sprite and uh, it is positioned at zero so nothing to add we'll add a box collider 2d which is a trigger and our cell script and for the color let's now use our uh, this purplish color and for our main camera let's set up its size so the size is going to be nine so it is going to fill up the whole screen and then we are going to save the cell as a prefab so that was just the basic scene setup and in the next part we'll uh, use the script 
to spawn all of our uh, starting cells and we'll see how the starting game is going to look so in the previous part we set about the starting ui now in our current part we are going to uh, spawn each of our cells and uh, let's see how we are going to do that so first uh, we'll open which is our main script game manager it is going to be responsible for spawning and uh, let's see what variables are we going to need so we are going to need a game manager instance maybe maybe not Mm, let's create the instance so we are going to need or oh, did we click so we are going to need a public static game manager instance and let me just add all the variables so public static and rows public static and calls and serialize field private tmp text text and our first text is going to be our level text and serialize field private level and we'll call this current level data and serialize field private tmp text we are going to have for the mouse text and serialize field best text and serialize field mm -mm. Uh, we are going to need our uh, play button transform and serialize field private transform our uh, grid parent then let's our serialize field private transform next button parent uh, transform sorry and after that we are going to have our cell which is our cell prefab and after that private integer for level number private integer for our move number and private integer for our best number and a couple of bools private bool for has game started and uh, private bool has game finished private bool can move and private bool for can start clicking so when the game is started we should be able to click our uh, play button or else the game has not started and when we click the play button we are going to play animation so for that amount we don't want to click anything as we are using dot tween and uh, the tweeners just uh, run inside its uh, own class and uh, when will it uh, when it will ex try to access the cells or any other properties it may have been uh, disabled and it will create issues so that's why I will need a reference to the tween so private tween and this is going to be our play start tween and this is going to be attached to our uh, uh, start button and then we are going to have a tween for our uh, play next tween so uh, we'll need to clean that tween as I already told you it is uh, not stored inside any of the game objects uh, so when we hit the next button and we were already playing that uh, animation on our button and we click the scene will be restarted and the game object will be gone 
and as our animations placed inside a static class it will uh, throw a reference error as uh, the whole game object will be gone and inside our awake So why is it not showing mono behavior? I don't need that. So let's add the update. Update uh, awake. So I'm not getting the boilerplate for that. So let's go inside Unity and we'll need to switch it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coding takes most of the time, so I'll need to close my Visual Studio and then open it again. And after I opened it, I'll need to detect it inside my Visual Studio, and now I should get the awake method. Okay, so now it is uh, showing up. Sometimes uh, it just includes autocorrect from multiple or the namespaces, so that's why it is not recommending. So instance is equals to this has game finished is going to be false, can move is going to be false, can can start clicking is going to be false, and has game started is going to be false. So just everything is going to be false at the start and by default it is false but it is uh, good to just assign it and after that mm, 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 so where's my data so let's go inside our start function and we'll set our rows to be our uh, current level data dot uh, row and calls to be our current level data dot calls and our level num is going to be player press dot get int and by default it is going to get the one level and after that similarly for our move num is going to be uh, zero and our best num <coughs> is going to be player preps dot get int and here we are going to use best plus level num dot to string and by default it is going to be zero and after that we'll set its text so level text dot text is going to be level num dot to string and most text dot text is going to be move num dot to string and our best text dot text is going to be best num dot to string and we'll set up our dot twin dot default autoplay to be false we don't uh, none so it is not false it is none and after that we'll set our play start twin to be equal to play button transform dot Uh, we'll use to scale and we are going to play button transform dot local scale multiplied by 1.1f and the time it is going to be 1f and instead of loss of scale we use local scale and we will set ease to linear and also set loops to mm, negative one so it is going to be infinite loop and we are going to go back and forth and we'll use play start twin dot play so after we have started playing so this is our start method so let's go inside unity and let's assign all of our variables assigned but not used uh, assigned but not used okay so let's put it at the 
bottom so for the level manager we will need the play button transform the grid parent transform the next button transform and the cell prefab which should be inside our uh, cell our current level data which should be inside our level our level text most text and the best text so level text is going to be our uh, text and what should happen is uh, it should show level 1 moves 0 best 0 and our uh, play button is animating but uh, we have not hidden the next so let's hide our next so we should be able to see the play so as you can see this is our uh, play button and after having our play button spawn so let's spawn all our cells so it is just going to be one function and uh, we'll call it spawn cells and for that we'll need to go into visual studio and let's create the method generate method spawn cells and let's see how we are going to spawn it <coughs> so let's set up our cells uh, we are going to need a reference to that so mm, yeah I didn't create it so private cell array and this is going to be the cells that we have private color array and this are going to be the correct colors and then we are going to have a private cell for our selected cell private cell for mode cell and a private vector to for our start pose when we click something so inside our spawn cells we are going to let's uh, set up our cells new cell and the value we are going to pass is uh, current level data dot row and our current level data dot call and similarly our correct colors is going to be new color and here we are going to pass current level data dot row and current level data dot call and after that we'll set our camera dot main dot background color is going to be current level data dot background color and we'll use for loop int x is equals to 0 x less than rows and for int y is equals to 0 y less than calls <coughs> so let's create our lerp first so how it is going to lerp in the x so it is going to be on the y so let's create a float of uh, y divided by calls and uh, we'll need calls minus one and our float y lerp is uh, going to be our x divided by rows minus one and uh, let's get our left color so left color should be dependent on the y lerp so we'll use color dot lerp and for the color first color we are going to pass current level data dot our bottom left color cause uh, that's where zero starts and next we are going to pass current level data dot top left color and the value we are going to pass is the x lerp x lerp no y lerp mm, should i have divided it nah let's just uh, add longer and after that we'll get our right color which is again should be color dot lerp and we'll use current level data dot uh, bottom right color 
and current level data dot bottom top right color and again the value is going to be similar and after that we are going to get our current color which should be color dot lerp and here we are going to use xlerp from left color to right color and we'll pass our xlerp so this is going to be our current color and our correct colors of x and y which should be row and call is going to be current color cells at our x and y is going to be instantiate our uh, cell prefab and we are going to instantiate add our grid parent and after that we are going to initialize so cells at x and y dot i and i t and here we'll need to pass our current color and the row and the column and instead of row and the column we need to pass the x and the y position and let's open our cell script uh, should have divided it in two parts now let's go to our cell script we'll need to create all the variables and uh, set up all the cells so let's create a header inspector and the first one is going to be public color color and hidden inspector public v2 int and this is going to be for our position and after that we are going to need a serialized field for our sprite renderer and this is going to be our background sprite and before that let's create our init method first so public void init public void init and here we'll pass uh, color int x and int y and we'll set our color to be equal to color and our background sprite dot color is going to be equal to color and after that our position is going to be new vector 2 int of x and y and transform dot local position is going to be new vector 3 of x comma y comma 0 and for now let's just uh, have it at there only it's already going to be 20 minutes long so if nothing is wrong it should be able to start spawning if we assign the prefab correctly so hmm, hmm, hmm. let's hit play and yeah so as you can see it spawned our starting cells the lerp is also working correctly and we also set up the level data correctly and that was a pretty long part so what we did just initialized our uh, yeah we just initialized our game manager which should have all the variables right now and uh, the cells we just created uh, some of the fields which were for taking the background sprite and uh, setting up the color so this is our starting look and when we hit play what should happen is uh, instead of the locked ones every other cell should be swapped it's not necessary it will be swapped but uh, most of the cells will be swapped so we'll do that in the next part
so we spawned our cells but at the start we had to add some animations so we are going to animate using dot to e so let's see what we are going to animate so previously i just created uh, this uh, three variables only so we are going to need more than that so let's create all so the first one we are going to create is uh, the start scale total delay uh, which is going to be the delay for our starting scale and we'll also set its default value so it is going to be 0.0f 0.04f and after that we are going to have private float start scale total time so how much time it is going to take to scale and let's set it to 0.2f and after that we are going to have serialize for float start move animation time so here we are going to animate our uh, cells uh, moving randomly to different uh, positions and it is going to be 0.32f and after we are going to have private float selected move animation time which is going to be whenever we select so it is going to reset to its uh, original position or uh, whatever switched position it is and uh, private float move animation time so this is going to be time for the other sprite or the other cell and after that we are going to have private const end and this is going to be for the front so whenever we click anything it should always be at front and const end for our back and our back is going to be at uh, zero or you could just set it as default and this were just the loads and ends and we are also going to save our tweens so the first tween is going to be our start animation which is just going to rescale and after that we are going to have our uh, start move animation and private tween move animation and our private tween selected move animation and we are going to create uh, bulls to check if uh, any of this animation is playing so the first one is going to be start twin playing so we can directly check as a start animation dot is active so it is going to return if it is active and uh, it will return true if it is uh, playing and false if it is null or uh, just uh, killed and similarly we are going to have a public bool for is start move playing and similarly it is going to be start as start move animation dot is active and we'll also have a public move for has selected move finished so if it is finished then it uh, the animation is going to be turned off so selected move dot animation dot is active and a public bool for has no finish so if it is finished then similarly our move animation is going to be active so if it is active that means it is not finished and uh, if it is finished that means it is not active so hmm, so these are going to be the variables now we need to play our start animation so previously we just uh, set up our 
just we just spawned it so we also need to set it up so our local scale is going to be zero and after that we are going to have our delay to be equal to x plus y and then we'll multiply it by start scale total delay i mean it is just delay we'll just rename it to delay uh where it is control r and uh, we'll just rename it to delay and after that we'll need to create our animation so we are going to save it in our start animation so start animation is going to be equal to transform dot scale do scale and we are going to scale to 1f and start scale total time <clears throat> and again we'll rename this start scale total time to start scale time and as it is just for one of the cell <clears throat> okay so it is going to play this animation so starts animation dot set ease and we are going to out exponential and uh, start animation dot set delay so it is going to have a delay and we'll pass our delay and also 0.5f so that's going to, and then we'll start playing so let's go into unity and let's see if uh, there are not any errors so our cell everything is set up so let's hit play and what we should see is this so this is our starting animation and uh, our uh, play animation is also working but uh, we need to check if our start animation is finished then only we are going to start the play animation and we need to delete or kill uh, our play animations uh, before our game object is turned off so it does not show any reference error so let's see how we are going to do it mm -hmm. so let's also create our public void animate start position so here we are just going to set our start move animation to be equal to transform dot do local move am i inside yeah so i am inside visual studio so it is just going to move to its original position and uh, what position it's going to be so let's pass a new vector 3 and here we'll pass our position dot x and position dot y and zero and the time it's going to be our uh, start move animation time and we'll set start move animation dot set is so we i will just set our ensign and we'll set the start move animation dot play so when are we going to call it so this animation is called when we hit our play button so we'll need to create a function for that inside our uh, game manager So let's go inside our game manager and let's see what's going to happen when we hit play. So first we'll create our public function which is going to be called when we hit play. So public void click play button. And this function is uh, going to return if uh, any of our start twin is playing so we'll use a for loop and again our for loop and we'll check if cells of i comma j dot is start twin playing 
so if it is playing then we are going to return cause we don't want to click it mm. and if it is not playing then we need to uh, play start tween dot kill so our animation is going to stop and our play start tween is going to be null and after that we are going to let's create a hash set uh, hash set won't be needed so we are going to swap so foreign i is equals to zero i less than rows foreign j is equals to zero j less than calls if current level data dot locked cells dot contains our new vector to end of i and j then we are going to continue so we don't need to do anything here but if it does not contain then let's create uh, two integers which are called swap x and swap y and we are going to pass a do while loop so our swap x is going to be random dot range using system I don't know if we are going to need it okay so we are going to need a system so it is going to be random dot range and here we'll pass 0 till rows and swap y is going to be 0 till calls and do while our uh, current level data dot locked cells dot contains our uh, new vector to end of uh, swap x comma swap y so we are going to do that and now there are not any errors mm -hmm. So it is going to just close get as a random position which is not going to be inside the lock positions and when we get it let's uh, get the cell so i and j is going to be equal to cells add swap and we need to save the values so so cells at uh, let's create a temporary cell and so inj is overwritten so we'll need to save it and we also need to swap their positions and cells of swap x and swap y is equals to temp and we also need to get the position so which should be at the swap done and the swap so vector 2 end swap position is going to be cells at ing so it is swap swap y dot position so we saved it then we'll set the inj so temp is going to be inj and ij is going to be x and y mm -hmm. but x and y's position needs to be our ij's position and ij's position mm, mm, mm. so there is some confusion here so let me change it so first ij is going to be swapped and its values changed but ij's position is not changed so we need to change its position so cells at i comma j dot position is going to be equal to 
temp dot position so its position should be changed but before changing that position we need to save that position inside the swap the position so which is going to be our v2 end okay we already save it and that swap position is going to be position for uh, swap x and swap y so let's uh, set the swap x and swap y so previously both of them should be same because we didn't change it i j and x y would be same same so we'll uh, put it at temp and our temp dot position Mm -hmm. so it is going to be at temp and our temp dot position is going to be our uh, swapped position and after that we are going to start animating so let's use a for loop for int i is equals to 0 i less than rows for int j is equals to 0 j less than calls Mm -hmm. cells at i comma j dot uh, start mm, i didn't make it public public void animate start position okay so it is start animation position not animate start position so it should animate and we are not going to do anything extra here but uh, after this animation has finished so click the play button so then our game should have started mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so our game should have started so has game started is equals to true and uh, our uh, play button transform dot game object dot set active we are going to false so let's go inside unity and let's see what will happen uh, there are only, only warnings so let's add our button component and we'll set the color tint to none and we'll add our game manager and we'll add our function which is going to be our click the play button so for now uh, what sh we should see is uh, animation and when we click play we should be able to see all the position swap so everything's perfectly clean and uh, before and all the animations are played it is not going to be swapped so that's why we added that and uh, maybe it would not create problems but uh, if you turn it off so we should be able to detect it like uh, what problem would it be so our animation is running uh, here infinite times and uh, if we don't turn it off so now let's go inside unity and now our play button is going to be turned off but our animation is going to be playing so let's see what would happen uh, did it yeah so it should have generated an error but it didn't it didn't so what would have happened that if we have destroyed the script would have not worked so here we are just turning it off if we add a destroy then it will create problems so that was it for the swapping so now our uh, game is uh, working perfectly fine and uh, the, our starting condition has uh, finished which should be our cool animations and when we hit click it is going to rearrange and now we need to solve this puzzle so we'll see in the next part how we are going to solve it uh, there are just going to be some simple animations and we need to add a little bit uh, mostly it's going to be inside the coding part so let's uh, go to the next lecture so in the previous part we added our starting movement and in our current part we are just going to create the functions for 
all of the movements so whenever we are clicking nothing is happening so we need to do that inside the update and update the respective cell move it around swap those positions and finally check the win so we'll mostly do the coding part and uh, it is not going to be sequen uh, let's do the let's just do it sequentially and we'll use the functions afterwards so let's see what we need to change we can just uh, directly finish our cell script as it's going to be the simplest so let's go inside our cell and previously we had the start now we are going to have our game finished so our game finished is going to be pretty similar so transform dot local scale is going to be 1f v3.1 and after that we are going to calculate delay which should be similar to position dot x plus position dot y multiplied by start scale delay and our start animation is going to be equal to transform dot do scale and here we are going to scale to 1f and not 1 here. 0.5 f start scale time start animation dot uh, set loops to yo yo and after setting the loops uh, set ease and here we are going to be in out exponential and set delay to be equal to our uh, delay 0.5 f so it is going to play the same animation but uh, instead of starting from 0 it is going to start from 1 and continue till uh, uh, 0.5 so that's going to be our finished now let's see what is going to happen when we are going to select it so our selected and move start so when we have clicked something we are going to rescale it and put it to the front so our background sprite dot sorting order is going to be front and our transform dot local scale is going to be v3 dot 1 multiplied by 1.2 f now public void our selected move end so what is going to happen at the end is uh, sorting order is going to back and after that our move animation is going to be transformed or do local move and where we are going to move we are going to move our position which should be new vector 3 position dot x and position dot y and 0 and the time it is going to take is our move animation time and our move animation dot on complete selected move animation time okay so we'll need to rename it selected new animation time selected move animation move animation time and this is going to be our selected move animation and selected move animation dot on complete is equals to so we are going to need a function so what is going to happen is uh, on complete so we reset it sorting order 
so the starting order is going to be back and uh, our scale is going to be set to 1 mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when we move so let's create a public void selected move and here we are going to pass some offset so let's add a vector 2 which is going to be offset mm, yeah. every coding session is long and when we pass offset we'll first set the position and it is going to be our position plus offset and then we are going to check if it is out of bounds so min y is equals to 0 f max y is equals to 0 f float min x and min y is equals to 0 f max x is going to be game manager dot calls minus 1 and max y is going to be game manager dot rows minus 1 and it would be better if we put them on a new line so min x min y max x max y and min x max x min y and max y so let's now check if uh, let's first get the position so vector 2 position is going to be transform dot local position and if our position dot x is less than min x position dot x is going to be min x and if it is greater than max x then position is going to be max x less than min y then position is going to be min y greater than max y then position is going to be max y so sometimes autocorrect works perfectly fine and our transform dot position is going to be our position so it is just going to change the position this one is going to bring it to the front and rescale it and this function is going to play the animation which will set it to at its uh, default position and that should be it for the movement and we are going to have one final animation which should be what should happen if uh, we have not selected but it needs to move so that should be our move animation so background sprite dot sorting order is going to be front then our move animation is going to be transform dot do local move and here we'll similarly pass our new vector 3 of our position dot x position dot y 0 f and we'll pass our move animation time and after that we'll set <coughs> move animation dot on complete is going to be background sprite dot sorting order we need to push it to the back and finally we need to play one animation and it should be move animation dot play so as you can see this are the functions so when we have clicked it should be brought to the front uh, when we are dragging it is going to change its position when it ends it is going to reset its position and this is going to be resetting position when we are not selected but still we need to access it so uh, there is going to be one extra function which is going to be bringing it to the front but uh, don't forget to play it 
so we are playing it here playing it here playing it here all the variables are set and let's now see how we are going to do that inside our game manager so we are just going to need one update function and uh, yeah that should be it so let's create our update function so check when hmm. Yeah, so everything's mostly going to be inside our update function. So let's go to the update. And if our game has finished, then we are going to return. And if our game has not started, then also we are going to return. That means we are not clicked anything. Our play button has its own logic. And if we can not start clicking, then we will check if we can start clicking and uh, how we are going to check is uh, every start animation should be finished so foreign i is equals to zero i less than rows foreign j is equals to zero j less than calls and our can start clicking and is equals to not cells of i and j so we can click if our uh, start move is playing <clears throat> so if it is playing then we cannot click but uh, mm, I mean we can directly return so if not cells of i comma j so if it is playing then we'll just directly return else we are not going to do anything if start move playing then we'll just return but if it is not then uh, we'll just directly set can start clicking to crow so and if we can if we can move if we cannot move and also our can move also needs to be true hmm, hmm. so every animation should have been completed playing then we can start click it and our uh, nothing is moving so our can move is uh, going to equal to if our selected cell dot uh, is selected move is selected I think we didn't create those two variables yeah we didn't create those balls so it should be inside our cells has selected more finished and has more finished okay so they are named different so if 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 if, if so if we are moving and has selected more finished and our mode cell dot has move finished then if both of them are finished then our selected cell is going to be equal to null our mode cell is going to be equal to null and our can move is going to be equal to true so then we can start clicking and also we need to check for the win so I'm just creating the going to create the function for now. So let's create prior word check win. And so that is going to happen when we cannot move. It is going to detect if the animation is finished. But when we can move, uh, the first thing we are going to do is input dot get mouse button down or zero. If it is not zero, then we'll check else if input dot get mouse button of zero that means if we have clicked else if input dot get mouse button up so if we have moved up so what would happen when we are going to click it so let's first get the mouse position so it is going to be equal to input camera dot main dot screen to 
world point of input.maps position and then we'll convert it to a 2d and it should be new vector 2 of our mouse pose dot x and mouse pose dot y then we'll create a ray cast ray cast it 2d and we'll call it hit and it is going to be physics 2d dot ray cast from our mouse pose 2d to 0 then if we have hit and hit dot collider dot try get component and we are going to get our selected cell so if we have if it has the selected cell component then we'll check if our current level data dot lock cells dot uh, contains and then our selected cell is going to be equal to null and we are going to return so if it is locked a cell and we need to pass the vector here so it is going to be new vector to selected cell dot position dot uh, y and selected cell dot position dot x hmm. so y is going to be its row and x is going to be its call and after that we'll set our start position to be equal to our mouse pose 2d and also our selected cell dot uh, selected move start so we have started moving and after that we'll check if our selected cell is equals to null then just directly return if it is not then we need to let's copy both of them and we'll create an offset so let's create a vector 2 offset and it's going to be mouse pose 2d minus uh, start pose and selected cell dot uh, move selected move and we'll pass our offset and uh, it should be inside our dragging and when we have released then uh, we need to check first if our selected cell is equal to null then we'll return and uh, our can move is going to be false so if we have released then it is going to be turned false and after that we'll first get our uh, position which should be converted to a vector 2 our uh, selected cell dot game object dot transform dot local position plus our new vector 2 0 0.5 f comma 0 0.5 so this is going to be your position then we need to get the row and the column depending on this position so int row is going to be casted to an end position dot uh, y and our column is going to be position dot x and we'll check if our current level data dot locked cells dot contains and uh, new vector to end of row and call or our move cell is equals to selected cell uh, we need to set our move cell here so <coughs> so our move cell is going to be cells of our row and the column then we'll sell selected cell dot selected move end and we are going to return and after that let's create a v2 end and we'll call this temporary position so first we'll swap the position which should be selected cell dot position 
and selected cell dot position is going to be equal to temporary position mode cell dot position okay selected cell dot position is going to be equal to mode cell dot position and our mode cell dot position is going to be equal to temporary position and after that we need to swap so our cells at our selected cell dot position dot x y selected cell dot position dot x is going to be equal to selected cell move cell dot position dot y is going to be equal to move cell so both of them uh, both of their position are correct so we don't need to do anything and we'll do is, uh, selected cell dot uh, selected move and and our mode cell dot move and and both of the movements are finished we'll increase the move number plus plus and move text dot text is going to be move dot to string so if there are not any problems uh, everything should have worked perfectly fine and let's go inside unity and let's see if it uh, gives us any problems so there is the cell everything is fine game manager also has the parameters set up correctly so now first we'll hit play uh, let's hit play and we are able to click and also we are able to move so as you can see both of the positions are uh, getting swapped the animation is also playing and let's use a long so as you can see we click uh, that was different so Why did that happen? I don't know. So we have clicked this. Uh, so mostly it is working perfectly fine. So if we fast click two of them, then it will create some problems. But everything everything should work perfectly fine. There are not any major issues and everyone is going to play like a normal person and we don't expect a monkey to move everything uh, here and there so mostly let's click two of them so we should have a little bit more delay it would have instantly swapped but most of the issues are not there so the final thing we need to check is uh, for the winning condition and it is going to play that animation again so we'll need to detect that uh, we'll do the final scripting in the next final part so we can get inputs and the final thing that's remaining is uh, showing us our end screen and we already created our check win function only thing we need to do is implement it we also added the game finished animation uh, let's start coding it up so what is going to happen with the check win so let's create a for loop and it is going to be rows and again for loop let's put j this is going to be calls and if our cells at inj dot color is not equal to our uh, corrected colors of uh, ing so then we are going to return we are not going to do anything as we already saved uh, what color should be at the position so it is going to show us that and after that has game finished is going to be true then we'll calculate our high score so if our best number is zero or our uh, best number is greater than our move number then we need to update 
our best number and we'll also update our player preps dot set int and best plus level number dot to string to best number and after that we'll increase the level which should be level uh, let's update best text dot text player preps dot set int level to our level number plus one and after that we need to show our next button transform dot game object dot set active to true and also our play next tween is going to be next button transform dot do scale and we are going to pass 1.1f and also 1f and dot set is to linear and dot set loops to negative one so it is going to run infinitely and we'll play the animation and after that we are going to play our for int j is equals to zero j less than calls cells of i comma j dot game finished and it should play the animations and uh, we'll need to create the function for our click next level button uh, click next button and first we need to check if uh, any of our animation is playing so let's copy our loop and we'll first check if cells at i and j comma is uh, start twin playing so it was our start twin then uh, we are going to return so if it is playing then we are going to return so game finished as uh, start animation uh, and start animation is going to be uh, we can get it from a start twin playing and does it capture cursor okay so it doesn't capture mm, should i capture it okay so the capture cursor is on and it doesn't matter for coding but i just turned it on mm, mm, mm. so if it is playing then uh, we need to play next to end dot kill so it needs to be deleted or it will cause problems unity engine dot scene management dot scene manager dot load scene zero and it should load our scene and to check if we are winning correctly what we are going to do is uh, where we are swapping we'll just uh, swap uh, three and two let's see how many it is going to swap now let's go inside unity and let's hit play Mm -mm. so it is reloading the script assemblies again 1.200 anti malware microsoft defender service i don't know why it takes so much ram so let's hit play and we reduce the number of swaps and okay so that was the wrong one so let's go inside visual studio and here it needs to be rows and calls and the swapping needs to be here so threes and twos now let's go inside unity and uh, let's see how many of them are swapped so as you can see only couple of them are swapped and it should be here they should be here and they should be here and as you can see our uh, 
so loop type dot yo yo yeah we need to forgot to add the loop type which should be let's go inside visual studio and 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 set loops yo 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 so uh loop type was different so it was not uh, it was just restarted again so there was some lags and now we are going into second level so let's put everything where it should be this should be here this should be here this should be here and this should be here so it finished in seven moves and as you can see the animation is working fine again our next is not working because we didn't add the button component and uh, let's hit uh, let's hit before hitting play let's add our click next level click 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 next button okay so we already click next button let's clear all the player prefs and uh, now let's hit play and uh, now our game should be finished so as you can see this is our current level this is our swapped level and this should be here and this should be here so as you can see the game finished we finished in three moves the next is also playing we got a new level it is also swapped and it is going to be here and where it should be so it is here it is here it is here okay it is here so now the game finished again and there are not any sounds but uh, if you want you can add any uh, sound you like the level also increased and the level generation I just uh, had it as different colors you want if you want you can also uh, add procedurally for different levels like 10 levels the mm, you can select a palette or do whatever you like so that was for the game and let's see how the game looks and we'll be done for this game so I was good with it. I am good with this game, not I was good with this game. And uh, where should we put this? Okay, so it should be here, and this one should be here. So the game finished. We finished in three moves, and we'll click next, and it should uh, give us a new level. And if you want, you can add directly new level inside our game manager instead of having a current level data. We'll have a list and it will load from the list. And that list uh, you can like. There are so many options. So that was it for this game. And there'll be eight more games to go. And if you want to check out the previous game, which should be Sudoku, you can follow the playlist. And uh, we'll be doing so much practice. There are almost 10 games. So. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video.